Hi everyone, and um, welcome back to the channel. So I'm in my rather chaotic workshop, and today I'm going to be doing a hyper tune on my newly acquired HEQ5. So I've uh, not 100% sure what bearings are in this uh, unit. I don't know if it's had any tuning done before, but I'm assuming it's got the original bearings in there. If you have a look at the declination, you'll see it's smooth, but it's a little bit stiff. On the RA side, again, it, it's, it's a bit better than the declination, but I think it can be improved. It's not bad. Um, on the guiding, I was getting between 0.8 and 0.9 on the uh, first uh, outing with it, which isn't bad. It's actually quite good, but I do think that can be improved. So what I'm going to be doing is a full strip down of the declination and the RA. We'll be replacing all of the bearings, so I'll show you a list of what's needed for that and what tools you may need. And we're going to improve this mount. The improvements it should give me is I'll be able to much easier balance the rig. So with no stiffness, finding perfect balance is much easier. And we should also get a good improvement on our guiding numbers and obviously good guiding the tighter your stars are going to be and the better your images. So we'll uh, start this job and get it all done. Uh, my name is Glenn and you're watching Astro Bloke. Okay, so the second favourite part of astrophotography is shopping, as I'm sure we all know. So these are the bearings uh, that you need for the mount. So we need uh, four of these very small ones for the two worm drives. We need six of these uh, bearings for the uh, mount. There's three in the declination and three in the RA. And we need two of the roller bearings, uh, one for the RA and one for the deck. I'll put a list, a link of a company that sells all of these and a list of which ones you need. You will also need some grease. Um, you can use white lithium grease. Some people just use standard lithium grease. Um, I like uh, this super lube, which is multi-purpose synthetic grease. So you just want a grease that basically um, is going to last, not go too sticky, and can withstand uh, the types of temperatures that your mount's going to come under. Right, let's show you what tools you might need for this job. There's four Allen keys required. We have one and a half mil, two mil, two and a half mil and four mil. You'll need a Phillips and a flat blade screwdriver. Uh, a rubber mallet may be needed or something similar. And this is optional, but a bearing puller makes removing the bearings a lot easier. So these are really all the tools you need to complete this job. So the first thing I'm going to do with a 3mm Allen key is I'm going to take the saddle off. So this is an upgraded saddle. I have, do have a video on the upgrades I've done on the mount if you look through my video list. Uh, but the removal of the original saddle is exactly the same. It's just these three grub screws. Once they're undone, the saddle comes off. Just make sure they're not undone too much, otherwise they can drop out and you don't want to lose any. Um, so some people have a lot of trouble undoing this. Um, it, it's always done up extremely tightly and uh, a special tool required to maybe move it off. It looks like somebody's actually had a go at trying to take this off and it doesn't look like they've done very well because there's some marks on it, but you don't actually have to remove this to do what we're doing of changing all the bearings. So leave that in place. Take the button off of the bottom of the counterweight bar. And what we can do then we can undo with this 3mm Allen key, we can undo again there's three locating grub screws and 
all the way around. Once they're loosened, this should unscrew, which it's doing nicely. Okay, so I'm just gonna lock that back in place. So once it's fully unscrewed, it will drop down, so keep your hand underneath it, so you don't drop it on the floor. There we go. And again, you've got three um, grub screws on the inside there that bite onto the bar. Just make sure they're not falling out and that they're all in place. With the same three millimeter Allen key, we can undo the cover to the row and belt mod. If this has been done, of course, I'm just gonna turn this to the side so we don't drop anything on the floor. Couple still holding on for dear life. Okay, that's them gone. Right, let's put the cover over there. So now there's three Allen key bolts that I need to loosen so that I can move the plate here that puts the tension on the Roman belt mod and will allow me to remove the belt from the worm drive gear so that I can then that easily lifts off put that somewhere safe so that when I move, remove the worm carrier that can come away from that so I'm just going to very lightly tighten those back up just so that nothing has any danger of dropping out so next we need an allen key to undo the worm carrier. You don't need to undo it a lot. Just so that they're not located on the brass parts inside. And then we need an allen key to just loosen the worm carrier. And then we can actually take these bolts out. Don't know if you can hear that, but I've got magpies jumping about the roof of my uh, workshop. Rattling around up there. Okay, so... With those uh, removed, everything will actually come out. So, we get hold of everything. We've got a roller bearing that falls down from there here, which is, which is that. So be aware of that, it could come out. And there's also a sleeve for that as well. Just put that there. And this should lift out. There's a bearing that sometimes comes out with the bar, but here, as you can see, it's stayed in. They're not too tight. As you see, that's just lifted out, so that'll be one of the bearings that we'll replace. Okay, and that's the declination stripped out and this little brass bit here and the top here is where we adjust the worm carrier for the backlash on the worm gear but we'll get back to that when we uh, do those adjustments so I'm just going to give everything a clean up here so with the declination off you've got the uh, deck carrier or the worm drive carrier should I say and we're going to be I'm feeling that it's actually got a little bit of I can actually feel a little bit of sort of click in there so 
we'll definitely be improving the bearings on that there's a little fine washer here that we should be able to tease up so be nice and gentle with it just tease it up and put that somewhere safe then what you've got if we make sure this is uh, released we've got the worm gear here that can come off the shaft and we've got two sets of bearings in here that we need to remove now they are tight tolerance you can pull them out with your fingers but it is quite tough uh, as you see that's started to move but if you get if they're not dead straight they won't come out so I own a bearing puller so they're not overly expensive if you wanted to buy yourself one you're looking at around sort of 20 20 to 30 pound for a set this is the 30 to 32 mil um, in a puller but it does make the job a lot easier for anything like this so just going to tighten this up so it's gripping the bearing and then with it in place hold everything nice and still and this should just pull the bearing up And that's the uh, original bearing there so let's be what put that somewhere so I don't replace it so I want to make sure I replace it with new bearings okay and the one on the other side so with the bearings out we can now make sure that everything is nice and clean and then what we can do is rebuild once we've done the uh, worm gear carrier or the worm drive carrier so this needs some new bearings in it so I've got some new bearings best to apply just a little thin layer of grease to the bit that is going into and it helps them slide in better you should be able to just be able to um, put these in with just your fit and there you go that slid in lovely that one sometimes they need a bit more of a push with the palm of your hand if you are going to use anything to tap them in make sure it's something like a rubber mallet so that you're not going to damage them in any way this one's a little bit tighter it could be that it's just not in square you've just got to get them perfectly square this one's a bit tighter so I'll just put my palm on there and let's push that in nicely and there's your two brand new bearings in there now the action I had on my locking pin was really good it just if you can see there it just pushes a brass brass pad forward there but everything's very smooth with this if it was a bit stiff I might be inclined to undo this screw take this off and just grease it but everything's fine with that so I'm not going to touch it okay so worm gear needs to go back in I'm just going to lubricate the inside of these two new bearings and we're just going to slide that back over making sure the pin's not sticking out and that slides all the way back in like that that's great feels very 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 smooth indeed that's good okay so what we're going to do now is move on to the worm gear carrier and we're just going to strip this down and uh, and do this I can actually feel it a little few notches in that there there's notches so the bearings I think the bearings they put in these are not good at all so um, they're going to 
benefit greatly from new bearings. So first thing I'm going to do is remove this cog off the end. Seemed like only one of the grub screws was done up there. We'll put that to the side. We've got a bung in this end. And we've got two, um, basically it's like a washer with two slots in it, castellated. Now they're not done up tightly. Uh, they are obviously done up, but not too tightly. And if you get a screwdriver in and just push, it actually turns it, no problem at all. So what we can then do is just work it round. What you don't want to do is damage the the slot. So there's one either end, so you can undo either end. But if we get this undone, and there's the, if you can see the slots on that. And then, the worm drive will slide out. And these are the bearings that we're looking to replace. They don't feel too bad actually, but you could definitely feel them notching when it was inside. Okay, we're just going to give this grease a little wipe, make sure there's no bits on here. I like to make sure I uh, keep an eye on which way round it went so that I don't uh, put it in back to front. So, my new bearings are here. I'm going to put one on that end. That went on very easy, didn't need any grease, which is good. Just tear this and this is the other one. Okay. Before I put it back in, I'm just going to make sure everything's clean and in good condition here. Now, it's a little cut out here where the um, worm drive sits, and I like to put a little bit of grease in there, just so that if for some reason, you know, the worm drive could actually pick some of it up if there's any, depending on how close the tolerance is. But put a little bit of grease in there. What I'm going to do now is just slide the worm drive back in with the new bearings. And then this washer goes back into place. Need a flat blade screwdriver, not a Phillips. Right, and then we just Slowly work that down. And we knew it wasn't very tight to start with because of how we undone it. So we're just going to do it up roughly the same as it was. So we're going to feel the tension, give it a little bit of a tighten. That feels there's no ratchet bit on that at all that's very nice okay next thing is to put some <coughs> load up the actual worm drive here so this I'm going to make sure it's got a nice bit of grease on it this is one bit you really want to grease up Okay, that looks good. Make sure my hands are clean-ish. 
I'm not sure that's clean. Going to relocate the cog. Put that in to where we think. Just up. So yeah, make sure one grab screw is on the flat. There's a flat part and there's a round part. Um, you might be able to see it there. You've got the flat edge. So make sure one's grub screws on that and the other one is on the round. And that's now perfectly smooth. There's no, yep, there's no, the other one had a little nick, little little bump. And that's got nothing now, so that's lovely. So that's the worm carrier done. Okay, reassembly. Uh, we'll put the red washer back on. That's good. And then we've got the worm carrier. And that's all lubricated up nicely. And it doesn't go on that way. It goes on that way. That's better. And that's going to locate on there. Right. And then we need to put this back on the mount. But first thing we need to do, oh, I've done the grease up. That's not a good idea because I need to get my uh, roller bearing and just give that a bit of a lube. Okay. So this is the housing that's got to go back into the mount. We'll just give that a little lube. Now, you can actually put too much grease on. Um, this is all very slow moving when we use it, so it's not likely to cause any problems with heat or friction, which can happen with uh, fast moving machinery. And if you pump in too much grease, it can actually cause um, problems with its, uh, with its working. So, just make sure that that's lubricated up nicely. That's all. Give that a few turns. Good. And we need one more bearing, which is for the um, for the shaft there, which goes into the uh, top of the mount. So what we'll do, we'll just get this bearing ready. And I'm actually going to put this in the mount and then we'll slide everything in place. Right. Okay, let's see if we can get this back into place. So we're going to put the declination back in. The roller bearing goes in the bottom part here. And in the top part is the uh, other bearing that sometimes comes off with the shaft. So I'm just going to put a bit of grease into the openings to make uh, rehousing the bearings a bit easier. Not too much, just a very thin layer. So this is for the roller bearing, so that's the housing for that. That goes in quite easily. Make sure it's not going to fall out. And this is the other bearing. Try and get it square. And that pushed in quite nicely. So make sure that it's glued up on the inside there. And we take the declination shaft and That should go all the way home, which it has. And then the roller bearing can go back on the bottom. And that's got to be square for it to push on. And that's in now. Okay, good. 
I'm just going to turn that to sideways so nothing falls out. That all looks located nicely. And so nothing can fall out. I've got a hair there that's decided to get himself involved, which we don't want. Let's get rid of that. Let's just turn that to the side for you. This now locates back on that thread, he says. And he hasn't got it on the thread. Let's try that again. Okay, that's located nicely. Not going to fully do that up, just make sure that's all in place. Nothing can fall out now, which is good. And what I'm going to do is put the uh, screws in to secure the worm housing. So just make sure the threads are located in all three places. And we don't want to do these up because we need to adjust the uh, worm carrier to sort out any backlash. So we don't want to do them up tight, we just want to take out the slack. If we lock the deck, you can hear that, that's the, that's the backlash where this isn't fully engaged. Okay, with that in place, we can take the button off the uh, counterweight bar, and we can reinsert the counterweight bar, that goes all the way through. And out the other side, put the button back on the end. Let's get that out of the way for a second. So now that everything's in place, I'm going to make sure that this is done up nice and firmly. So that everything, there's no movement. And then there's the three grub screws inside to do up. Again, I'll just locate them. And then I'll go round and tighten them. And these just lock this collar onto the end of the bar that it's threaded to. I'll nip that one there, tighten that one there, and tighten that one there. Don't over tighten things because they will strip. Whoops, there's the old uh, counterweight bar, good, that's all in place. Everything feels nice and smooth. Okay, next we're going to put the belt back on the Declination drive. So I had a bit of a moment there. Basically, I'd put the belt on this way and realised, well, I was finding that it just didn't want to go around. It wasn't big enough and it was on the furthest adjustment across, which didn't make sense to me. And of course, if I go the other way, underneath, it fits on very easily with slack and then I've got the adjustment to get it back to, to its tension. So it only goes one way. So if you find it's a bit tight, you must be putting it on the wrong way, which I was doing, and uh, we need to get it that way round for it to fit nicely. So, what I'm going to do now is I actually ended up loosening all the bolts to get this to uh, go on. So, the three bolts, the top, top two here and this one here is for the motor. So I'm just going to get that more centrally placed on the carrier and I'm just going to nip them up and then the corner bolts 
is for the carrier this 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 whole unit that holds the motor and I'm going to use that to get the adjustment I'm looking also at the angle between the large cog and the small cog and I can see that the large cog is actually in a little bit more than the small cog so I'm going to loosen them and just pull it up a little bit because I want it to I don't want the uh, belt to work its way off in any any chance of that happening which could happen if they're out of alignment so just gonna loosen the two little rub screws on the spine I'm just gonna lift the lift the gear a little bit about there it's always the way it moves too far or not enough okay I think it's much better I'm just gonna tweak them back up that's much better so it looks in line now And now to adjust the carrier, sometimes a small screwdriver can help you push it away. I'll just try and show you there. You can push it away from there. But what we need is about a 2 mil bit of play on the uh, belt. We don't want it too tight, so that one looks a bit slack. So I would say that's about right. So with that there... Not too tight, not too loose. That looks good. I'm just going to make sure all of the nuts are tweaked up. Nothing over tightened. But everything nice and firmly secured. Good. Okay, now the carrier's not quite done up, so... We loosened that off because we thought that was what was causing the problem with the worm drive, which it uh, isn't. So we're just going to very gently locate them. And what we're going to do now is lock the deck and we have a fill. And we can fill the backlash. So the adjustments we need to make with the two screws is basically if we need to move the worm gear to engage more, we will need to loosen this one and tighten this one. And if we need to look the other way, obviously it's the opposite. So we're going to loosen this one. And then we're going to tighten the top one. So that the slack's gone. Still a bit of backlash there. So again, loosen this one. And we're only doing like no more than a quarter of a turn. Do a teeny bit there. So just, we're very close now. So we just loosen that bit. Tighten that bit. I don't know if I can feel any now. It's minute. Can't feel any now. That feels really good. Now the only thing we've got to do is obviously run the gear to make sure there's no binding. If there's any binding, we'll have to loosen it off a little bit. So once you've finished um, adjusting the backlash, get your mount powered up, and I'm using the handset, and I'm just going to give this a complete revolution and make sure there's no binding. So that's great, that's gone round a complete 360 revolution of the uh, the worm gear and there's no binding at all there's absolutely no play in the deck at all so I'm very happy with that and uh, look forward to getting that out and guiding and seeing what improvements we've made
So now that we've completed the declination axis, we now need to do the RA. So take the cover off of the polar scope to start with. And your polar scope should undo just with your hand. Unscrew that and uh, move that out of the way. If you find your polar scope doesn't want to come out, you may want to get a cloth, soft cloth around it, maybe a pair of pliers or grips that may help it. But um, mine wasn't uh, any more than hand tight, so uh, hopefully yours will be like that too. So next, with a very, very small Allen key, there's some grub screws just inside here. And we need to undo these. Now don't take them out because they're easy to lose. You just want them so you can just see the grub screw sticking out at the end. They're no longer holding this ring locked. So I'm just making sure I can see both grub screws sticking out, which they are. And we should now be able to grab hold of this ring and undo it. Okay, a little bit tight. Maybe some uh, rubber gloves or something like that would help grip it because it is a little bit slippery. And uh, that all then comes off. And hopefully, I can show you there. You can see the grub screws that stick up that hold that in place. So, keeping everything in its orientation, I'm going to put it to the side. The next thing to do is to, with a Phillips screwdriver, is undo the screws that hold this control box in place. So the screw will fall out. So either be really good at catching it or watch where it goes. And I caught that one. So for once I don't need to hunt for the two screws, which is rather nice. With the control box off, and the wires are a little bit tight, so be careful. Um, it'll be very hard to show you this. But just inside, there, is the same as what's here, which is the Allen key for the worm carrier adjustment for the backlash. I'm just going to lock that in place. So what I need to do is just loosen that so that we can get the worm carrier off. Everything's in the way at the moment, so that's not good. Let's just see if I can move that out of the way. As I say, there's not a lot of slack on these wires, so you might be luckier, you might have one with a bit more room. So just give that a couple of turns. I'm actually going to take... I've actually made a decision, I'm going to take this, this saddle back off because it's actually in the way. I think if you had the original saddle it wouldn't be a problem because it's a lot smaller but this saddle's quite large and unfortunately it's uh, just causing me a few issues but it's very easy to take on and off so okay yep that makes life easier okay undo that if I turn the gear over now the other side is here, just on the back. So we just undo that. And what we can do now is loosen off the bolts to the carrier. Just lock that in place now. I'm just gonna 
remove them. And now I'm going to just remove the head from the actual tripod and going to get this on the bench to uh, carry on working with it. So you need to find a way of supporting the mount upside down. I'm just going to use a, a workmate here. I'm just going to put a old t-shirt there just to so I don't mark the paintwork in any way. And that just holds on to it and gives it a base for me to work upon. So from this position there's three uh, gaps here and there's a little grub screws inside that need to be loosened. Once the three grub screws are undone, there's three large castellations here. It, this can be extremely tight. So with a screwdriver, very lightly, you may be able to just give it a tap and, and help loosen the nut. Once it is loose, as I say, don't hit it too hard. That nut should come undone. And it's got the world's longest thread. Now I can see on the top there, there's a roller bearing and a load of grease. But what we're going to do now is we're going to hold the R8 and we're going to, using the gravity and the weight of the head, we're going to try and work the R8 up, which it comes up quite nicely there. There's a tapered bearing in here, as we had with the other one. Just seeing if I can see what make it is, but there's no make on it. So it's being replaced with a Tim Ken um, roller bearing. This housing will need to come out as well. Came out quite easy. This is, it looks like somebody has actually been in here and greased this up quite heavily. Um, and the RA was actually running a lot better than the declination, so that might be partly why. But so we're going to give everything a good clean up. So take the worm carrier off, this may help me see what's going on here. Uh, everything's extremely tight on here. And the problem I've got here is that this bearing here is uh, sort of jammed on the... I can feel it moving. Here we go. Wobbled off. That really didn't want to come off at all. Again, we've got um, the red washer, which we need to put aside and look after. There's absolutely grease everywhere here, which is not good. And we'll sort this out. And that now lifts off nicely. There's grease everywhere. Uh, a bit of a clean up needed here. So with that off, I'm just um, having a bit of a wipe up really. There was just grease uh, pretty much everywhere. Under here, which is not necessary. And we just give everything a good wipe and a clean and so we don't need to remove every single piece of grease but what you don't want is what we just had there where we just literally had grease over everything um, if you've got grease all the way around the brass part of the worm gear um, you're gonna have you could have problems locking the worm drive because it you've put grease between the uh, button and the uh, and the cylinder here, and if you can look here, this is like literally covered in grease all up the cylinder. That's not going to grip on that, it's going to cause it to slip. So um, there's far too much grease on this, so I'm going to give this a clean and uh, before we change the bearings.
Okay, the last two bearings we need to look at. Take another bit of paper. We've got the roller bearing and we've got the final shaft bearing here. And we have the Tim Ken roller bearing. So this one, I'm just going to put some grease on. And grease on the outside as well. Whoops, didn't want to do that. A bit late now, we've done it. Okay, and then we're just going to load up the bearing, make sure it's got some nice bit of grease in it. That sits in there, lovely. So now we're looking to reassemble everything. First off, we have the worm gear. And then the small red washer. Goes on top. And we now have the worm carrier, which can pass over the top. I had issues with the back bolt so I'm going to spin this round just to show you which one I was having problems with it was this one here trying to undo it with the RA on top it actually didn't want to come out it was catching against the metalwork so I'm going to actually locate these worm carrying bolts in now before I put the RA housing back on So the worm housing here has a location here for this bearing. So what I'm going to do is put some lubrication in there, just a very light, thin layer. And then I'm going to attempt to put the bearing in there and get it to locate, hopefully. So it's quite difficult because it's down a deep hole. It's hard to get it straight and there we go, that's gone in place. And of course the button fell out again. This is uh proving to be uh proving to be a troublesome person. Right, you go back in there, lovely. Should I'm gonna put the button in afterwards, I think. Right, so this should now push back on nicely. And what we need to do now is in the top insert the roller bearing. So we put the housing in first. Didn't quite get that square. That's in. And the roller bearing on top. <laughs> the RA clutch has just been like a battle all the way through. Okay, so that's that's all nicely located. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to locate the top nut. Now how tight this needs to be, not 100% sure. It wasn't that tight, but we'll do it up hand tight. And then we need to go around 
and do up the three grub screws that lock this into place so it can't undo and that locks that nice and firmly we can then look to reapply the top ring first of all we need to put in the dial with the grub screw sticking out we can put this locking washer on again this wasn't that tight so just finger tight and then with the very small allen key just do these up which will prevent it from working itself loose here's the Roman belt let's make sure we put it the right side the correct side now this time last time I was putting it the wrong side and I think I'm doing the same again so this time it goes this way does it no, that's a lot tighter, isn't it? Let's push that down. That's definitely not the side. Okay, and this side. That's better. Yep, that's the one. You kind of know when you've got the correct side because it's. it looks like it's going to fit. If you go the wrong side, it looks like it's never going to fit. And it looks like something's happened to it, like it's shrunk. Okay, let's just turn that on. Now, I'm just going to look at the alignment between the large gear and the small gear now actually I've got them spot on by the looks of it nice that looks good nice what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the head back on the tripod so now the mount head is back on I'm just checking the backlash on the RA there's a little bit of a can just feel a little bit of movement on there so I'm just adjusting the carrier before we tighten it up so let's put movement on it so we moved it the wrong way so this actually needs to undo and this one needs to do up so it's just quarter of a turn no more that feels much better again just a little bit off a little bit of a tighten that feels good once you feel there's no movement make sure that it will slow down as you can see there that means the worm drive is too tight. Sometimes just pushing that. So we've got a little bit of play in there. So that's not good. That's a little bit too much. I'm just going to tighten this one, make sure everything's right. That's nipped up nicely, so just feel that. There's a little bit of play in that, but it's moving freely. So, what I want to do now is just undo this a little bit. And just do this one up a little bit. No, move, no movement in the RA, but will it slew? Oh, I'd say it's just a little teeny bit tight. So we need to just, and this will be like an eighth of a turn. If you undo that one, do up this one. It's a very fine 
balance, but there's no movement in the RA there now. And there's no binding in the slewing. So that's what we're looking for. We're looking for no play, but it's got to be able to slew. And if it makes any noises or doesn't slew, then you know that you've got an issue with it being too tight. So now we've got the RA adjusted and the carrier is uh, reattached properly. We're now going to put the two screws in to hold the electronic uh, box there in place. I'm going to reapply the uh, saddle now. Everything's coming back together nicely. Just a little show here. Um, just the difference uh, on the deck that is now spinning very smoothly with hardly any resistance at all so that's nice that's going to help a lot with balance and guiding and on the RA that is completely different that is super smooth Just uh, balancing the um, the loads alone is going to make life so much easier. When you've got a bit of stiffness or stickiness in those uh, in these mounts, it makes uh, getting your um, scope and counterweights perfectly balanced quite difficult. And good balance is going to you know really help you with a the ability for your uh, mount to carry the load, especially if you're pushing it towards its limits. It will really help it out. Um, and uh, and it should also help very much so in guiding it's not going to have to work so hard because it's not going to have any uh, stickiness or resistance to have to work through ok let's put the polar scope back I'm going to put that cap back on the end and we're slowly putting everything back together and last but not least we need to reapply the cover for the rowing belts. So feeling quite happy with the work that's uh, been done. Everything's gone fairly well, not too many problems. And uh, the action of the uh, mount was lovely just then. That's exactly what I was after and hoped for. Um, and so what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna load the mount up with uh, counterweights and a telescope and uh, we'll see how easy it is to uh, balance. I've got the mount now loaded up with uh, some counterweights and a scope. So what I'm going to do is just show you um, the difference with this mount now, now that um, it's had the hypertune done, how smooth everything is. It actually makes balancing really easy. So you can almost just let go of it and see if it falls. So it's falling just ever so slightly scope side which is always a, a nice thing to be a little bit scope heavy, but we can actually get the balance spot on just by moving the weights just ever so slightly. Whereas before, what I would have to do is literally push it to see if it was move at all. So that's still ever so slightly scope heavy. So I'm just going to move it down a little bit more. And there it's holding really nice. Everything is so light and smooth now it's really nice so let's have a look at that we've still got the uh, caps on there which I've done before so let's take them off because they do make a difference and as you can see there that is just lovely So that is running really smoothly and uh, I'm really excited to get this out in the field and actually get some tests on the uh, guiding. I think it's going to be much improved. Um, I hope that the video has been of some help to you. If you do have any questions about some of the work I've done or if there's any areas you get a little bit stuck on or I've not explained clearly, please let me know in the comments section below. I'll be more than happy to get back to you and help you. 
Um, but uh, all that remains for me to say is thank you ever so much for joining the channel. Thank you for your support and your kind comments. And until next time, take care and I wish you all clear skies.